It's been a long wait, but the first version of Microsoft Office designed for Windows 8 is here. Office 365 Home Premium, the real thing, not the preview, is now available to download, and it brings the software suite into a world of touch, the cloud, and collaboration via social networks. It's a needed upgrade, although there isn't, it isn't quite as convenient to use as simpler alternatives, such as Google Drive. As of today, Microsoft Office 2013 for consumers is available in 162 markets in 21 languages for either a $99.95 yearly subscription. The subscription allows you to install Office on up to five devices, PCs, Macs, or a mix, comes with 60 Skype minutes per month, and 20 gigabytes of SkyDrive storage, and entitles you to continual updates to the apps as long as you subscribe. You can still buy the new Office for the one-time cost of $219.99, but that only lets you install it on one machine and you don't get the version upgrades. Office 365 University for college students and staff is also available for a $79.99 yearly subscription. The business version of Office, which is priced a bit higher and includes deeper integration with Microsoft's enterprise software, won't arrive until February the 27th. Today, only the Windows apps are getting a refresh. The Mac apps are still only the 2011 versions and don't have the new features in Office 2013. Cloud collaboration, for instance, can only be done via the Office web apps. The Mac version of a major Office update typically lags the Windows one by several months, but it often gets a few new extras when it finally arrives. But let's get back to the Windows version. The most powerful change to Office is the new edition that is made with connectivity in mind. It starts with how you get it. No longer do you need to go to a store and buy a package with a disk inside, though you still can. A purchase gets you a product code. Enter the code and you're taken to an account screen where you can download the Office apps and then manage your Skype minute storage and authorize or deauthorize your five devices running the software. It's all very logical. Connection to the cloud, mainly via Microsoft's SkyDrive cloud service, is a constant presence in the new office. Once you've connected your account, the default save location is SkyDrive, which also enables sharing and collaborating with others. Microsoft was already using the cloud with Office 365, of course, but now the integration goes deeper. You can work on a SkyDrive document within the native Word app, for instance, as opposed to the browser, and it will even indicate if anyone else is editing the document at that time. If you want to ask what they're doing, it's easy to initiate an instant message, call or Skype them without leaving the app. The way Office 2013 works with the cloud is excellent, though I had a couple of issues with it. Word still needs any edits to be manually saved before they show up for other collaborators. It's a stark change for anyone used to Google Drive's real-time edits that just magically appear. Second, and this is a greater problem, many have found editing in Word noticeably slows down when working on a SkyDrive stored document, even when no one else was working on it. It's not a lot, but it's just enough to just default to saving locally. Of course, that eliminates the possibility of collaboration and other advantages. Generally, though, greater connectivity was a needed upgrade for Office, and I hope Microsoft continues to improve it. Now it's possible, say, to, say, insert a YouTube video into a Word document. Excel tables can be populated with real-time data. PowerPoint has slide templates that are constantly updated via the Internet. <clears throat> but now let's talk about Microsoft Word for a bit. The apps that constitute Office have evolved over the years, but the core is still Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. All of them have a new Spartan look that eschews the old toolbars for a revamped navigation across the top. Things like File, Home, Instant, and View, Insert, and View are all there, and tapping or clicking on one calls up a ribbon of clearly labeled icons. It's all very neat. If you've ever tried to insert something like a photo into a Word document, you know why page layout apps like Adobe InDesign exist. Word 2013 does inserts better than any previous version, though adjusting text wraps in real time as you move your object, be it photo, clip art, or video. Options for inserting online images and videos are right in the menus. One of the best changes in Word 2013 is the rethink of track changes. 
Editors know this function well, and many secretly dread the way it turns documents into strike-through laden mush, with comments pop up everywhere. The new word gives you an easy way to remove the markings from view while simultaneously consolidating these pop-up conversations. Even better, you can now protect documents with a password, ensuring users can't make changes outside of using track changes. If you're used to the old way the feature works, it's a little panicky when you make your first change and don't see the familiar strike through, but now the mess is under control. Finally, a lifesaver, Word can now edit PDFs just like you would any other document. When you're done, you have the option to save as a PDF or a Word document. This is one of my favorite features probably about the entire suite of Office 2013. But let's move on to Excel and PowerPoint. Excel's new big wow feature is Flash Fill. In the tour, the app takes a table full of email addresses format formatted by firstname.lastname at wherever.com and invites you to create a new column with just the first names. Start typing the first one, nothing happens. Start typing the second, and Excel figures out what you're doing and automatically fills out the rest of the column. The first time this happens, you might actually cheer. However, it's a situation that I had a hard time replicating usefulness-wise. This could be just me, but most of the tables I have don't have similarity form similarly formatted data right for extrapolated partitioning. Still, it could save loads of time if you're doing a data cleanup, say, getting contact information out of an old address book. Far more useful, I think, are Excel's suggested charts and instant analysis. Got data? Excel can suggest several types of tables that will be appropriate for it. I found this choices, like this chart below, to be very good, generally needing only style adjustments and proper tiles to make them truly pretty. It's a bit humbling when an app has better instinct than you, but you know, it's kind of hard for people who aren't chart people by nature. PowerPoint's best new feature is Presenter View. This is a feature that already exists in other apps like Apple's Keynote, and Microsoft has done a good job building this for touch. When you connect your PC to an external monitor, Presenter View shows you a screen with a miniaturized slide along with your notes and the time elapsed. You can use gestures to enlarge things or jump just yourself ahead in the presentation. These are just a few of the highlights of Office 2013, but they give you a feel of the direction Microsoft is heading in. Office has been the go-to suite for core productivity apps for going on two decades, but its overall experience felt tired and inflexible in the world of real-time collaboration with services such as Google Apps, Dropbox, and LibreOffice. With Office 2013, Microsoft has caught up with its competitors, but it hasn't quite surpassed them. It still needs to polish its experience and make the experience even more inviting. Office certainly still has its edge on features and formatting, and the new layout is pretty, but it still has an intimidation factor. The reason you could upgrade, you should upgrade though, and get the new version isn't the cloud integration or the cool new features. It's the subscription model. Spending $99.95 a year on a suite of world-class productivity apps that you can install on five machines, complete with cloud integration and continual updates, is simply a good deal. Yes, you can arguably have Google Apps on an unlimited number of machines for free, but if you're like me, you'll at one point or another long for a word formatting option or Excel pivot table. Although Microsoft's cloud integration isn't as good as Google's, you'll never have the frustration of not being able to work because the, quote, connection to the server was too busy, unquote. If you've ever felt adrift in the cloud at the mercy of the changing winds of the internet, Office 2013 will keep you safely tethered to the ground. Anyway, thanks for watching this CTN video. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you enjoyed this review and thought it was helpful. Also, check out CTN's website for a lot more stuff like this. Thanks for watching and see you next time.